Hello and welcome to my channel. Here's a nice little charcoal landscape for you. A night in the forest. Let me take you through the drying process. The first thing I'm going to do is put down a bit of charcoal powder and smudge that with brushes. The size of the paper is a uh, is a little bit smaller than usual and I'm using a Fabriano sketching paper I'm going to switch to a larger brush here to make this a little bit quicker I created the charcoal powder by sharpening one of my pencils I need uh, I need a little bit of value in the background because uh, the, whole, the whole scene is going to be a little bit darker and I also need something to work with in the background. But the objects in the foreground are going to be a lot darker than the background. I want the background to look kind of um, slightly out of focus maybe. Not so much out of focus but with less contrast and less detail. I'm drawing one of the trees in the foreground here on the left using a charcoal pencil. So that's going to be one of those darker objects where there's going to be more contrast. But my main idea here is to try to achieve contrast between the darker foreground and the slightly lighter background. I'm going to make it look like it's a forest scene but maybe with some moonlight or something. Um, I'm drawing some trees which are way back, uh, not way back but further back in the distance and that's why they're a little bit lighter and uh, less detailed. So I'm going to do those with a piece of vine charcoal and then I'm going to blend that with my blending tools. I needed something that wouldn't be too dark. I needed something that wouldn't produ produce uh, lines of darker value because as I've already explained I'm trying to create contrast between the foreground and the background where the foreground is going to be darker. It's going to have more detail and more contrast. So all of these trees in the background are going to be um, lighter and also a lot less detailed, a lot less defined. Um, I'm using that same piece of vine charcoal to add some branches and some foliage around those tree trunks. The trees I'm going to be drawing are going to be some kind of coniferous type of trees I guess, pine, fir type of trees or something doesn't really matter. Um, and another thing I used for some of the really thin branches where I needed uh, not only thin lines but lighter lines, I used one of my charcoal, uh, one of my uh, harder black pencils because I was afraid that a charcoal pencil might leave a mark that would be too dark and I want all of these details in the background to be lighter of lighter value and inconspicuous. So I'm adding more and more of those uh, clusters of needles or whatever they are around some of these branches. But this doesn't have to be detailed, it doesn't have to look great because a lot of it, a lot of it is going to be blended in and there's going to be stuff over it in the foreground so it's not a big it's not a big deal uh, but I do want to try to make the background look complex it's not going to be super complex I just want to create an illusion like I've spent a lot of time um, drawing these details in the background but as always with drawing landscapes 
just a few suggestions uh, can really boost the imagination of the viewer and give them the impression that they are looking at something really, really detailed when in fact it, just, uh, it took just a few minutes to create. Now this part here in the foreground is going to be quite a bit more detailed because I can't really oversimplify this part because I have to draw a lot of these branches and they need to be kind of overlapping and um, growing out uh, out of the sides of the tree trunk. I won't have many of them, but in order to make them look convincing, realistic, I need to try to um, <clears throat> make their shape as irregular as possible, but at the same time keep in mind that they have to taper as they grow out. So they are thicker near the, near the base and thinner near the end. And while I'm blending these darker areas on the tree trunks, I'm also trying to keep the edges fairly clean, even though with charcoal that can sometimes be a little bit difficult. So I'm using one of my blending stumps uh, so that I can try to clean up those edges as much as possible because I can't really use erasers here because I already covered the background with, uh, with a little bit of value. So. I need to try to achieve as much precision and accuracy as possible using just a combination of my pencil and a blending stump. So now I'm moving on to some of these uh, clusters of needles and branches in the foreground. I'm doing the same thing that I did in the background but here I am uh, making this a lot more detailed and of course a lot darker. So these really need to stand out against the background. And as I'm doing this, as I'm drawing these darker details in the foreground, I'm kind of hoping that these darker elements in the foreground will push uh, the lighter elements with less contrast in the background, that they will kind of push them back, creating that feeling of distance, because that's my main idea to create a feeling of depth and distance using this contrast in value between the foreground and the background. Notice how I'm uh, using these short strokes to try to create something that looks like a whole bunch of these clusters of needles and I also blend them in later using a hard bristle, bristle brush with a crop tip and the reason why blending them is useful because, uh, because uh, the brush doesn't ruin all of your texture but at the same time it, it softens the, these lines and um, makes everything look more natural kind of like when you're drawing grass or hair yeah, you create that illusion of volume even though you didn't draw every single blade of grass or in this case every single needle and every single branch or twig so that's a way to create a more a voluminous looking foliage which is what I want to achieve because I want to make it look like uh, there's not much light coming through some of these canopies and I want to make the scene a little bit darker overall here at the bottom I'm also adding some suggestions of maybe some um, grass or bushes or maybe some uh, young tree sprouts smaller tree sprouts and another thing that I'm doing here is I'm using a pencil eraser to erase uh, a few marks here and there so that I can make it look like some of the branches some of the branches are in front of the other tree and like some of these clusters of needles are also in front of the tree trunk. That further adds to the feeling of depth. Here I'm going to have a, a longer branch growing out to the side and the reason why this, uh, or this branch or these branches are so useful to me here is because they are kind of extending into the 
into the middle of the paper and that'll give me an opportunity to put some objects in front of that lighter background which will further help me with my goal to create distance and depth in my drawing. I talked many times about uh, the importance of creating a feeling of depth in your landscape drawings. You can see that I'm uh, drawing a whole bunch of these uh, branches and they're growing out to the sides of the tree and drooping a little bit because of their weight and their shape and I'm adding a whole bunch of those clusters of needles. Uh, you have to be patient with this and you have to take your time to kind of stack them and group them together until uh, whatever it is that you're drawing, whatever shape you're, you're trying to achieve uh, starts to make sense because at first it won't look great but as you keep adding more and more and more um, you know, it will start to look better and some ideas uh, will, will start presenting themselves to you. You will pick up on these uh, shapes that you've created accidentally and you'll refine them and turn them into something that looks like an actual tree. So it's basically a process in which uh, some parts of that process are deliberate and intentional while others are just happy accidents if you if you want to call them that another blending tool that I use to soften the appearance of those clusters of needles is a blending stump that also helps achieving a bit more volume and I'm adding some details uh, some some details to the tree trunks to make them more interesting as well and softening some of these uh, some of the foliage a little bit with a brush here and there again I use a black pencil a black colored pencil to add some of the finer twigs some of the thinner twigs and maybe some other details here and there. The charcoal pencils that I'm using are Warrison Woodless charcoal pencils. You can use any any charcoal pencil you like, you can use any brand. Just get whichever whichever you can buy. And also vine charcoal is a very useful tool because it has some properties that charcoal pencils don't. It's a lot softer and lighter and it's easier to move around. Charcoal pencils are quite a bit darker and when you put them down you know that this area is usually going to stay darker. And here I'm adding some more darker value to the ground here at the bottom and maybe adding some more details there as well, some grass and some bushes and some young trees, smaller trees, kind of varying the shape a little bit, making some of those look a little bit twisted and kind of um, growing one in front of the other and next to one another, etc just trying to make that part of the foreground look a bit more interesting. The thing is that even if you have a reference photo um, the way to draw a nice looking landscape with relaxation, without tension is to ignore some of the some of the details in your reference photo to relax and to try to approximate whatever it is that you're looking at this takes a bit of practice and you can also choose which parts of the drawing to uh, you want to be more detailed and which ones you want to simplify 
Uh, again, I'm using a pencil eraser to add some lighter details in, in front of the tree trunk. I want to make it look like some of these clusters of needles are obscuring at least a part of the tree trunk. And I think this makes the whole canopy look a lot more realistic. Uh, so the left portion of the drawing is pretty much done. I'm moving on to the center and the right side. Here at the bottom, I'm in addition to this grass and these bushes, I'm also going to try to create some suggestions of maybe some rocks, like a slightly rocky terrain. And with these I need a little bit more range of value, so I'm using a combination of my pencil and, uh, and an eraser and a pencil. I'm using the eraser to clean up some of the edges and to make some of those stones and rocks stand out. Here I'm going to have a couple more trees in the foreground. These are going to be darker as well. I'm going to have one growing straight near the center and I'm going to have another one as you can see on the right which is a leaning slightly to one side, a little bit crooked. Here in the background I can add some maybe young trees, shorter trees, which have just sprouted out maybe. Just a little bit taller than the grass and some of the bushes. I don't even know if these will end up being visible once I do all of the foreground, but it, it just helps to stack elements in the background or in the midground so that you can create more depth in your drawing. So I can't really know in advance um, what, what my scene is going to look like and whether all of the objects in the background are going to end up being visible, but um, that's not really that important because eventually all of the work you've done on the background does help a little bit because the viewer can still see, they can still tell that there is still some something there in the background and that there are some details there. Like for example, if you look at the scene now, those trees in the background are kind of barely visible, but at the same time they are still there and the viewer, the viewer will pick up on that, no doubt. I'm adding a bit more value to this tree here. One of the problems with charcoal is that once you start blending it, um, it doesn't necessarily stay as dark as you originally wanted it to be. So you can use your fingers or some sponges or some other tools if you want to retain that amount of value, but sometimes you just have to use regular brushes and tutelins and blending stumps. I drew the tree on the right and I'm probably not going to be adding any more um, larger elements in the foreground. I'm just going to add a whole bunch of this foliage and make these canopies look a little bit more complex because I want some more of those clusters of needles as well as those branches to be growing out to the sides and obscuring at least uh, one part of the background so that the background would look uh, even more like it's further away, further behind those trees in the foreground. And I'm using the same tactic here that I did on the left, softening those marks a little bit to make them look more realistic and more voluminous and just adding a few more branches here and there. So at this point I've already established all of the elements in my composition and I'm just adding some of the details basically. The, the larger objects are there, the, uh, the larger relationships between areas of lighter and darker value are also there. 
there's not much to be done in terms of the composition and the overall amount of value at this point I'm just going to be adding more and more details because I do want the drawing to look detailed it's not a very large drawing but I'm going to do the best I can on this smaller format uh, one of the things I can tell you if you want to draw landscapes is if you want to practice it's always better to start on smaller paper sizes because that way if things go wrong you won't end up investing too much time into a drawing but I find that overall landscapes are a lot more relaxing to draw than portraits and even wildlife because there is a lot more precision and therefore uh, a lot less anxiety in the artists because they can really um, allow themselves to improvise and simplify and approximate which is which all makes the drawing process a lot more relaxing and a lot more fun. I'm adding some more value and some more details to the um, to the background on the right, trying to make sure that um, that the right side of the drawing is as detailed as the left one and that it's also kind of balanced in terms of the amount of value. I do have some uh, rocks here on the right side in, uh, in the lower right corner. I added those in as well to make the terrain more interesting but I also need to clean up their edges as you can see um, and the best way to clean up the edges is to use a pencil eraser and of course I need to try to stay consistent with the light source which is usually coming from above so uh, that's something that I always need to keep in mind but I'm also adding some lighter details uh, on the foreground in the grass in the trees and so on all in the purpose of creating a little bit more depth in my drawing but also adding some random details here and there to make the whole scene look more realistic. I would like to remind you that if you are new to my channel you should subscribe and you should check out my other videos. I have lots of charcoal videos, I have lots of uh, landscapes in charcoal but in other pencils, other media as well and on my Patreon you can also see really long full-length narrated videos dozens of them so if you want to go beyond what you see on my channel and if you want to uh, watch some additional content Patreon is a great place for that here I'm putting down some of the finishing touches adding a bit of value in those corners where the drawing was secured with a tape and adding some of the finishing touches to the objects in the foreground I'm going to put the signature in the lower right corner and here it is, that's the finished drawing don't forget to check out my other videos, don't forget to subscribe, thank you for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one, bye for now.